Well, we're glad to glad to see you. We get we just hugged and it was it was one oh, of the few hugs I've had. So good. Yeah. You know, not even for my girlfriend. You know, so this has been mm. you just satiated mm. me physically. I'm good for the next few months. How are things for with your hug? girlfriend, Kaz? Speaking Why do you? Of. They're just, fine. No, they're always on on the verge of it. It's always on the verge of ending. <laughs> which That's is fine. That's passion. That's yeah. what happens when you're under quarantine. You buy a house. And you fundamentally don't get along. That's what all. But you know what? Well, are there ever moments where you're like, "This is the fucking greatest. I love this person. This sure. is my life forever." Yes, yes, but okay. You know, I like yeah, to play the character. I like to play the character of abused boyfriend. No, I know it. And Rob feeds in. Oh, Rob <laughs> feeds on it. I do time. not, dude. Uh, you just uh, what? On the way here, you lost your cool. I didn't <laughs> lose my cool. <laughs> I will show you my cool being lost. He's I, seen it. B- Bryce, we've talked about recording our car rides here and doing little to. like vlogs or something because people got to see. Like, no, dude, you're bullshit. He's like, it, like, it needs to be for Pajama Pants Instagram feed. There needs to yeah. be a story every week of these rides. Yeah, and he j- and Kasim will just lose and I have, to, I have to guide him. I'm sorry, dude. If somebody's doing 55 on the freeway, I'm going to ask what that person is doing and then I'm going to go around. He's like, what is he just got thinking? <laughs> it's crazy. Traffic is starting to get <laughs> Fill back up. Yeah. Oh. And I didn't take too much advantage of it when it wasn't there wasn't any, you know? Yeah. I feel like I could have gone out and taken advantage of the roads a lot more. But now no one's really on the road as much. But there's a lot of debris. A lot of just loose debris. Well it's been windy. It's been super windy. You know what you know what I what you said that bothered me a little is like you said you said Yeah, please tell me, dude. (laughs) You said Things were fine with you and Lindsay, but I've heard when people ask you, like, oh, how's pajama pants going? And you're like, it's fine. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> this is going way better. This is going great. I'm not going to say so it's that's going just better. An answer. That's She's, just your thing. She doesn't but listen. That, she stopped the, listening to the show after she thinks Rob went in on me too hard one time. <gasps> oh, a police. When? She, which police. One? Which she, one? She that is, was not the time for that. She runs a crew. <laughs> In fucking Santa Monica or Venice, of people just looking to fucking go. She's she she goes hard. Look, I think I think we need to have her on for you guys to hash it out. I I really do. Needs to be. I really like her, but (laughs) I really do. No, that's generally what people say about her. Like, I really like her, but and then they throw in the. I don't have a. (laughs) No, no, I just think I just think it's fun. (sighs) I've actually only hung out with her one time, which is sad, but. I really enjoyed my time with her. And she as re- did my she, son. She's really into celebrities, so you should. Oh, that's why. <laughs> no, you should make her day. Send her a text. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I do have her number. Yeah, well, she's she, that shallow. She gave me. I, I guess I, you know, I used to be kind of a, some sort of a celebrity, but I, when I went to your house a couple weeks ago, she gave me a very lukewarm <gasps> welcome. Like she was like, "Oh hi," and then like I went to hug her, and she's like, "Oh, you're doing hugs." What? Like she was kind of like, but she warmed up to me a little after. But she is was that because a little. Of, why? What happened? She, she, I think, part of her thinks Rob hates her. Oh, uh, it's so little does she know. I like her. You hate does her. Does Rob? Does Rob even like me? Oh come on! Of course I do. I. I... She's sensitive. Well, but she, but she comes across very tough. So I think that's to why. To protect like, herself. Look, right, she's but... she's gonna be a reality TV show star. So she doesn't Hell need. Yes. She doesn't need any she of us. She's gonna be. The biggest celebrity in this crew. And I think she's a really good person. I wish nothing but the best for her. When you guys Me too. part ways. And I wish her the best in the future. <laughs> I wish her luck. Have a great life. Have, enjoy it. <laughs> Poor thing. If Cutter talked like this about me, I'd be so fucking mad. I'm all to, come on, Jamie, be on my side. She, I'm she, kidding. Mostly, she gets I'm. In there I know too. you are. It's still hard. She it's fancies still hard herself a bit of a comedian. She for she sure. Thinks, she thinks she does everything well. <laughs> so that's good. No, that's so great. do you, right? You, you agree? I have many faults, and no, one I mean, of them you is think being she does a, boy, a good boyfriend. You think she does everything well too? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone has been heavily exposed. I feel like in quarantine. Do you know what I mean? Especially except for the me. people, except for you because you're alone. <laughs> but like the people that you're around, like even I feel like in front of our children, like they have seen all the sides of yeah. me and Cutter. Just this morning, Bo was like. Oh, this is a Jack. Jack the other day was walking in front of me, had no idea I was behind him. Like I could tell he was like, like thinking like, oh, I'm alone. And like he <laughs> slipped on something and he goes, oh, shit. Uh, and got up and kept walking. And I'm like, 
that's definitely from this quarantine. Yeah. And yeah. Bo this morning, this fucking cereal. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. He and said this fucking, this fucking cereal. Oh, I love it. And, and, and naturally. What a like, very, very, very yeah. well used. It was stale. He was right. Yeah. You're like, I would get mad at you, but mm-hmm. it's fucking three weeks right. expired. It's expired three weeks. You know, when you say like people are exposed to shit, can I tell you what makes me so fucking angry? And I listen. Yeah. I didn't fucking meditate today. I, I tried to poop oh. before Kasim picked me up and it didn't go. You're Here's what happened this morning. Uh, Rob, Rob said, Rob, pick me up. off a kilter. Rob listen. said, pick me up at 10. I show up at 9.55. I even share my location with him on, on iPhone so he knows exactly where I am. And I'm always I'm always on time, right? He shows up at, at my car at like 10.15. No, no. no. Go oh my him. god, such a lie! That's exactly what you were doing to me lie. about the road rage. How does it feel? How does it taste? Well, it's, yeah, but you, these are that was my interpretation. You're lying about numbers. It's very different. You're lying about specific. No, I know. I was. I was, in, I was down there for 45 minutes. <laughs> it was 10:08. Okay, well, this story is about what makes Rob mad. What happened? Okay. No, no, no. So uh, I'm just saying uh, everything's. Got, I, I tried to yeah. at like 9:50. I check how long it takes to get to the podcast studio. It says a lot less time. So I'm like, oh, Kasim always like Kasim is very calculated when he drives, and he knows like it's gonna take us 37 minutes. I'll pick you up 37 minutes before. Like he's good. He's mm-hmm. great. He's he's. I'm giving you compliments. Best. He's he's I'm really best. good at it. So I'm like, oh, okay, it's gonna take us fast. I gotta poop instead of holding this for five hours. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna poop. So I start pooping. I know people sometimes don't like to hear about poop. Whatever. I I, I start pooping and it just I, I the phone starts going off. Casim shared his location. He's arriving now, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. So I can't I can't relax with a bidet. So so I, I just it's it's not going good. So I, I start why it's just it's just not good. And I'm like I'm trying to I'm like Siri. She's like yeah. I'm like tell Casim. <laughs> like I'm like you know I'm trying to and I'm naked. It's just a mess. And you're naked. Yeah, yeah, you because take all I was your clothes off to poop. No, 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 I was o- I had just woken up, so I was only in my like shorts that I sleep in. Oh. So I just took those off to sure. poop because I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't take off all of my clothes normally. <laughs> um, but so I, yeah, I'm a little frazzled. But the thing that makes me so angry is imagine you you naked on the toilet, your pink fleshy. It's skin. yeah, it's it's not. You know what? You know what's funny? You say Welcome that. Welcome back to the studio. So oh. there's there's like a uh, here's my shower, right? And here's where I poop. This is representing your shower. No, no, no. Okay. This is a thing of soap that's in my shower. It's oh. actually perfect for that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me move uh, my soap out of the way. This would not be a shower. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so I put this is my loofah. I don't have a loofah, but th- so I here's the soap in the shower, right? So I'm pooping the other day. And like I look over and I see my reflection <laughs> in the soap, and I was like, "You are disgusting!" <laughs> like just so, gr- like because you see like the bend in my because I got the squatty potty too, so my <laughs> my knees are like oh up, and you just see like the bend in my hip, and then I'm like, "God, no wonder you're alone for three months. You deserve this this quarantine. This because you just look and like you said, I'm so, I'm pale and just oh, it's such. Am a- I the only one who doesn't need a squatty potty to have a healthy movement? I don't. You don't need. No one needs a squatty potty. I sh- I went to the bathroom without it for thirty years. You're just so vulnerable. You're just presenting your you your are. vulnerable well, region. Try shooting well, water at your butthole. Thank God it looks good from his manscaped at least. Yeah, that yeah. that part's good. Just shout out manscaped. For yeah, supporting twenty percent off. Shipping. You know what? You go. Where? Let's let's talk and your about order. That. Jamie just Jamie just manscaped.com. Use yeah. Promo code Look, PJ they just Pants. came out with uh, a new item. It's called the Weed Whacker, and it's a nose hair and ear hair trimmer for you old fogies out there. Mm. And we all got one. And we all got one. All got it's one. in my uh, Manscaped dop kit with my lawnmower 3.0. So um, when I'm when I'm done shaving my pubes, I go right up top to the nose. Mm-hmm. I don't have any ear hair, thank God, and I take <laughs> care of it. And I'm one of these guys whose nose hairs come down into the mustache. And then I, my nose hair pretends like it's a mustache <laughs> hair. And uh, took care of it. Zip, me. zip. Didn't pull. Because normally that area is very sensitive. As you can see, I have quite a prodigious mm-hmm. nose. Yeah, they on extended me. the battery life just for him. It was a 60 minute battery. Yeah. Bang. I said, not good 90 enough. Minute. Not good yeah. enough. It's 90 minutes now. It's got the uh, proprietary safeguard technology. It's got a 9,000 <laughs> RPM motor. It does. Yeah. It's perfect. It's waterproof. And, but listen, the, the thing I've been using uh, is the, the pew trimmer with the lawnmower 3.0 has a light on it. So you well, really that's like. nice and thoughtful. Yeah, because sometimes you can like not do the best job. And with that light, you really, things are like, I would have looked way worse in that soap reflection yeah. if not for 
uh, the Manscaped. Also, Father's Day is coming up. What a perfect gift is the perfect package 3.0. You know, I said you got that. He said I'm lawn crazy. Lawnmower, you got which is water resistant, the cordless <laughs> body trimmer, the performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag. Yeah, for ladies, dad. buy it for your dad. Not yeah. creepy at all. No, and guys, buy it for your dad. Dads, <laughs> ladies out there, buy your dad a puke trimmer from <laughs> Manscaped.com. Dads probably need this more than than you do. <laughs> Even Dad's my girlfriend used it. Dads get after this quarantine. We know? were kind of making fun of Lindsay because she had a little Fu Manchu going on down mm, there, it and she zip zip took it right whoop, off. Whoop. Yep. Absolutely disgusting before, but now <laughs> I yeah, have no problem their, going down there. Their cer- oh gosh, their <laughs> ceramic blade is uh, helps reduce the snags. Yeah, yeah. you don't and need a snag in your vag. That's the last place you need a snag. Nope, you yeah. don't need a snag in your vag. You're welcome. You don't need Very a snag on your bag either. Line. Use promo code PJ Pants at Manscaped.com. You get twenty percent off and free shipping on your first order. And yep. that's how you support the show is by and supporting our sponsors. And your dad will thank you. And that's yeah. also Send how you do it. Send it to your dad. Send it to daddy. <laughs> here, daddy. How was that, how about Bryce? my transition? Bang. Oh, it was fucking beautiful. You know I'm not I... even angry anymore. Hey, you know what daddy. I watch? You know what I watch? Promo code PJ Pants. I'm... P-J-P-A-N-T-S. 20% off free shipping. Go ahead, Jay. You know what I watched on repeat the other day? And I don't know why. I was like scrolling back in Instagram to show something to Cutter. And it was the thing when the when the, the slow-mo video of uh, when the spider came down. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Such a great moment. By the way, I was, Cutter was like, you're, you really don't give a fuck about like what you look like because that is a bad video of you. I was like, you're oh, right. so I good. Don't. I do not care at all. It's one of the best best versions of you I've ever seen. Can I, can I, can I tell you, I it was don't- the real me. I don't read comments, but- uh, Yeah, how would you? Bryce shared uh, the link for us to like go into the YouTube to see like our numbers and all this mm. stuff. So when I did, there was a thing like, all the stuff you can click on. And one of the things I clicked on, I was just clicking oh, on God. all of them. And I clicked on the thing that was comments. Oh, God. And I read it. Can I say, we have the dumbest person in the world listening to our podcast. Oh, no. We're going to lose a listener. Were they mean to me? Are you coming no, to no, 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 right no, now? No, 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 no. They could be mean to us. I don't, I don't care about that. We have someone who's so dumb. Oh, God. Uh, we're losing him as a listener, and I don't care. I don't know. I'm still. I, I still want to hear. His... Blown away. You're gonna be blown away by this. So here's the comment. We were doing a. Wow, podcast. you memorized it. It must be good. No, okay. no, no. I did. Yeah, I just have go. the gist. It was very short. <laughs> we were doing a podcast, and Jamie's phone went off, and like something else happened, and it was things were just sloppy. So I made a joke, and I said, "Hey, Spotify, what are you paying Joe Rogan? A hundred million? We want." 200 million of course so somebody wrote well you were obviously serious somebody wrote hey guys 200 million dollars joe rogan has 1900 episodes of his podcast (laughs) and you guys have 36 you guys need to chill yeah if you he has a point we don't deserve two hundred million. Don't if, hate on Bo. He's you, just learning how to if, use if YouTube. If you didn't get that that was a joke, stop listening. No, listen. If you're out there, don't I'm watch. with you. I don't want to lose you as a listener. I agree with your math. Listen. Go to fucking yeah, Manscaped. Yeah, we don't deserve two hundred million right now. <laughs> go to Correct. Manscaped and use promo code PJPANTS. Get twenty percent off free shipping. PJ but Panties. Then, but then get oh out of here. We don't need. We don't want you. Are you kidding? Well, look, Two, if you don't have Rob support. Two hundred million dollars. Look at where. Look at this table. Two hundred so million dollars. Nice. You think we're asking for two? <sighs> I'll be bringing Rob gold chocolate bars by that time. And by the way, people are gonna be like, "Oh, what? You got triggered by the comment?" No, you can make fun of us. You could talk shit about this when you don't get that we don't want two hundred million dollars <laughs> for this podcast. That's on. Episode 38 in Bryce's garage. <laughs> it's a little disappointing because I would like 200 million dollars. What would you do with 200 million dollars? Oh, well, great. I would, uh, here's what I'd do I'd <laughs> buy, drop Lindsay real quick. <laughs> I'd become single. <laughs> I'd become Go on sing- the bachelor. I'd become so single. I'd be so single. I'd be on my own Epstein Island. Ugh. <sighs> And I'd do exactly what Epstein did, but I'd rage, raise the ages up. I'll bring the ages of the girls that I bring over up five to six years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm importing fresh 21-year-olds. That's a serious conversation. <laughs> That's a serious question. No, I'd do everything I could to be able to import fresh 21-year-olds into my, my Virgin Islands island. 
in a way and my Palm Beach house and have a network of them bringing each other in. If you really watch the Epstein doc, the G, the genius of Epstein, the genius of this man was that he created a, a, a self, it was all self-contained and all the women were... Pr- being predators for more women. It's I should like say that women. Farm they were talked girls. about on the way here. Yeah, talked about how the ducks, little the big snails. farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I would find a way and then invite heads of state, uh, princes, politicians, celebrities, Chris Tucker, <laughs> and I would give them. I would let them have their pick, and I'd also have twenty-one-year-old men, because it's twenty-twenty and it's about time. Here's the thing, though. I used to have this because when you sit at a poker table for fucking 16 hours a day, you come up with these games where, like, people do all this stuff. There's this one called Lot and Thinks where, like, me and you bet on an answer that he's going to give. So the fact doesn't matter at all. Right. It could be, like, how many people do you think or how many push-ups do you think he can do or how many people live in the state of New York? And then he gets a number. He writes it down. Me and you bet on what the number is. How many push-ups do you guys think I could do? 38. But no, that's the thing. It's how many you think you can do, not how many. But some people know, so it's fun. Well, so I wouldn't have to do it. it. You you don't have to, or you can, or you could be like, hey, let's figure this out. But how many? Okay, like good, good, solid, formed push-ups. I think you could do about thirty-eight. Oh, did you already say thirty-eight? Yeah. She okay, said 38 I, I, twice now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. You just thought of 38 after she said 38? Wow, um, it must be a psychic connection. <laughs> we have an email about that. If if you're... <laughs> we do? <laughs> Somebody we have email. emails. Somebody we wrote should in get about to being them. a psychic. We should get they, to them for once. They don't, I'm with you guys. They don't want it to be read, but wouldn't they know if we're going to read it or not anyway? They if, said don't read this? Kind of, right? Okay, don't read their name. Okay. Um, so... How many push-ups can you do? Uh, do you think you could do a lot less push-ups now? Because b- l- to catch people up, you were working out five days a week before the quarantine. Correct. Since the quarantine has happened, you have not worked out at all. I've worked out a total of four days. And, but none of five, it was maybe. like any kind of like push-ups or strength no, it's, training. No, it's just, it, was just... it was running. Mm. Yeah. No strength. I've, I've noticed and I've had my partner notice that I have lost muscle mass. So well, have I. So I feel everyone. my arms are skinnier, my legs are smaller, my what was uh, abs, which I've shown on this show, are now gone, and it's I've uh, completely lost whatever momentum I had. But the gym is open on Monday officially. You going? Oh yeah, I'm going. Or uh, for a sense of normalcy, okay. absolutely. And not only is it good With for exercise, mask? it's my meditation. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure I have to wear a mask, but. Uh, I'm just excited to be back, you know, and uh, <laughs> looking forward to send, showing you guys some ab, ab progress. Yes, so here's my wait. question. Before and afters, please. Do you think that I think he has enough before? <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, I just ate half a chocolate bar. <laughs> oh, shout but out. It's, but it's Who Kitchen. Yeah. Shout out. So I think Rob it's you, sent right? me mm-hmm. like a shit These are not a sponsor, by the no, way. No, not a sponsor. And they there was no note. So I assume that like the Who Kitchen people sent it to me. So I like put it on Instagram being like, yo, whoa, what did I do? But thank you for all of this chocolate. And then Rob one day was like, did you ever get the chocolate? I was like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So then I, when I posted it, they're like, oh, so glad you like it. We'll send you a bunch. And I was like, well, can you please send Rob some? Because he's who got it for oh. me. So I just brought him the chocolate bars, but you ate. One. And by I ate half a one. Not They're a commercial. So good. Not a commercial at all. We have nothing to do. No. They are so good. And it's like puffed quinoa. But I gotta say, they that's are what I was they are a little pricey. And that's what you could tell this isn't a commercial. I'm telling you. They're expensive. They're like five bucks a bar. But Five bucks is not a lot for a bar. Well, I, I think they're like a five chocolate million. bar. Dude, uh, you go to Erewhon, but this on is average, so they're good for seven, you. eight well, dollars. Air, you mean the most expensive? I thought you were uh, going to say uh, you were going to buy out Erewhon with your two hundred million. Yeah, you could get a, you. Most chocolate bars are like a dollar. I would. 50. I will have an Erewhon on my island, mm. stocked with things that twenty-one-year-old girls and boys like. Uh, so, do you think? Here's the question: Do Coconut you think water. that you can do you? What was? How many push-ups has the number dropped from when you the before the quarantine until now? Do you think? I would say. But don't tell us the numbers because no, we're gonna I, guess I'm gonna the write mine down. You I, said 38. No, how many is gonna drop? Oh, how many? You just said how so many. So you think he could drop. do 38 now? I think he could do 38 now, but I'm gonna write the number I think it dropped. I'd, I'd say they probably seven. It, I probably <laughs> dropped 10. 
If you add your two answers up, you get mine. <laughs> 17. Okay. No, no way, 17. I'm going to say. You don't think he dropped 17 reps? No, no, no. I'm going to say, and, and especially because he hasn't worked out in so long, if we have him do one set, I think he's going to really go. And especially if it was on camera. Oh, my God. Should we Should we do it? Do you yeah. want to do one and get it on camera? I can do, I can do it. I don't want to, but I can. I can can video you record it? it? And this is what I would do for the podcast. <laughs> okay. So let's say, I'm going to say that Kasim can do. I got faith in you, babe. I, I would go low. I would go lower. If you, if you think if you think about Lindsay on the last like ten oh, or fifteen, okay. I right. I would say if I, I just rage. Okay, so through. here's I'll give you my thought process. I think you're easily getting fifty. Oh, don't say anything. I'm I'm gonna get my number. Damn, I kind of like that thirty-eight. I'm gonna go. Use that. We can. You wrote thirty-nine. Forty. No, that's the episode number. Oh. <laughs> it's not a bad guess either. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, man. See, I also think if I You're guess... You're like that annoying person, the price is right. It's like <laughs> yeah. 1,401. Yeah, they're like, just say a fucking number already. All right, I'm going to go... I got a lot of anxiety right now. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm giving you... No, because then that would mean after you... Get All right, chocolate. 43. Get We're going to yeah. say 43, just okay. just to just to throw it out there. All right, Shout so you're saying pack. how many? 38. Good and form. Saying... Good form. I don't want shitty form. All right. Okay, so, so I, you should think I try before quarantine, he could have done like 54? 50. Yeah, some, yeah. If that math was right... <laughs> Well, yeah. probably was. I think you'll both be disappointed. No way, babe. but I will okay. try. Okay. This guy's light as a feather. All right, we'll we gotta. Off for you we gotta move some cameras listening. here, guys. So bear with you us. This is this is the first time. We'll I'll give you. A, I'll no, give you a little here. play by play. Should I just do it right here? I want yeah, you to back up. Yeah, wherever you want. Uh, There's no coronavirus on the floor of the garage. Oh, okay. I'm upping it to 44. What is that, Mace? There you go. Ready? Yeah. We're ready, babe. You want to see me at my one? Oh, he's gonna. What are you going on your knuckles? Okay. Come on, forty-three, babe. Let's go. All right, here we go. One, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, seven. Eight, this is great for the audience eight, out there. They love it. Nine, nine ten, two, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, Ooh, sixteen, oh seventeen, really eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You look good, babe. One, twenty-one, two, twenty-two, twenty-three, three, twenty-four, four, twenty-five. 26, uh, the 27, back is a little 28, bit. come on, 29, 29 that core. 30, go babe, 31, 32, come on, 33, 34, oh, shit. 35, come on babe, 36, 37, oh. <laughs> closest without going over, oh I did 38 go is over, over, shit, uh, I won. so it's just Whatever. gonna be a podcast with the two of us for the rest of the, by the way, Cass, <laughs> congratulations, you just worked out, we've been trying to get rid of Cass, <laughs> We You're welcome. It out. I You're fucking, pay me to oh, be your trainer. Oh, sorry, Lindsay. The fucking broads are gonna be sending DMs like crazy Look at after your that chest performance. Muscles Woo! in your shirt right now, popping. I hate when people breathe heavy into a microphone. So, I feel like excuse me. Wait, I'm really, really impressed with myself. On the guest? Yeah. <laughs> he just did that performance. You're like, I am amazing. What a great job you did. <laughs> yeah. Wow, James. You know, I, I didn't expect that out of you, but. Um, That's a I'm little disappointing. Like, it's a little away. disappointing. Just my radar is very good. So what do you think you could have done before? Quarantine. In the 40s. Well, yeah. Just a bit more? <laughs> yeah, because I used to do push-ups last year. <laughs> <laughs> And then I stopped. <laughs> and um, in my workout, I do. You just start breathing through that nose. Babe. I do like 60 push ups. I do a push up after every round of a speed bag. Mm. I do 15 and then speed bag. And Speaking then of bags. No. So <laughs> I apologize for all of you that have to hear me right now just... and, and watched. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to the gym and being. Known as the sex symbol that I I was before quarantine. Yeah, when you walk in the gym, they're like, "There he is!" Yeah. It's the fucking. And I, if any of you are watching this and you're female and you're wet right now, <laughs> <laughs> please, please, uh, <laughs> please slide into the DMs. Oh okay. My God. No, oh, that, that that's was gross. great. Oh, uh, that's gross. Okay. Jamie, yeah. how many push-ups do you think you could do? Or you probably know how many push-ups you could like do. Like full, like not knee push-ups, like full body push-ups. Well, I could both. probably do like 12. 12 regular push-ups. But I have, not been, I have not, I normally worked out two to three times a week with a trainer at my house. Now I'm maybe at one. One time a week um, or one One time a week like on FaceTime. 
So I don't know if I, I don't know where I'm at. I'd probably do like a good clean 10, 10, 11 right now. Oh, that's great. But I was up to 20 when I was working. What about on the knees push-ups? On the knees, I could do like 20. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, see. You're, gonna, you're not gonna ask me to do it. Are no you? way. Okay. I have these gorgeous, beautiful, long arms, and they really—they're not good for push-ups. What about swimming? You know, swimming is a great point. And I—I I used to have a pool, mm-hmm. and I never went in it. I'm just—it takes a lot of effort for me to get into a pool because there's that initial shock of how cold it is. You didn't heat it? No. Mm. no he used no. to come to my house. My house last night. Something's wrong with it. Cutter, his fucking like thing is the pool heater. Like if I turn it up, I'll like look later and like he's turned it back down. And it's like a big fight between us. Well, what's us. the like, temperature? It's, like, a really big fight. What do like, you like? I it want at? it like eighty-eight, ninety. A pool? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you bougie. Do you know how much energy it takes? Well, to we're keep solar a pool? powered in our home. First of all, not our pool heater. Okay. But all right, no, I'll go fuck boom. myself. Boom. But. Um, no, but with our, with the, we live in the valley, so it's very hot. So it only has to heat a little bit and then it naturally stays warm for so something happened yesterday where the pool heater did not shut off oh, no. while it was really hot. It was like over a hundred degrees in the valley yesterday. Um, our friends came over with their kids just outside so they could swim and play and they all jumped in at the same time. The three of them came out and they were like, <laughs> we put a baby thermometer and it was 107 degrees. They're that's like, this spa. is that's this hotter is than so, a spa. So refreshing. <laughs> Jamie, a they spa is like a 104 max. I was like, it's very steamy in here. <laughs> He's an old Jewish woman, Bo? Bo? Mommy! Yeah. Oi! Have you never heard Bo really speak? He sounds like he's from New York in like, yeah, old, he, in like the 20s. Yeah. Bo is yeah. so good. Um, look, I got emails. Let's do it. Do you Hold want? On. Do you want to? Yeah, enough of our. Whatever major. you gotta. Whatever you gotta do. Yeah. I just want to get through some. Yeah, go for it, baby. This one. Do you like my new water bottle, by the way? Yeah, is it an Algene? Nathan. It's a Nathan. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, very similar. <laughs> I'd, I'd say it's beautiful. Great colors. Right. Thanks. You drinking? Trying to drink one of those? Jamie hasn't I put been out in a long time. I electrolyte mix, and I drink two of these a day now. You'd be so proud of me. Do you How guys? I used to drink like two Perrier's a day. Making a pee pee. Um, I built it up. It was bad. Let's be bad. honest. Are you a pee-pee monster? When I was first starting to drink water, I was a massive pee-pee monster. Now yeah. I can like, now I can hold it. I'm going to have to pee like after this, but I'll be okay. Oh, that's cool. We'll help you. Thank you. Subject, <clears throat> mud vein question for Robert Eiler. Mm. Hey guys, great mud show. Vein. I watch every episode on YouTube. Shout out to our YouTube channel. Shout Hit out that to subscribe. Dig. Hit that notification bell if you want to get updates. I am an insane, I am an insanely... Mud vein fan. That's that's what he said. That's, okay? that's how me saying most it insane mud vein fans. So speak. when Anthony Jr. goes to their show, I was blown <laughs> away because they never were that big. So my question is, who was in charge of Anthony mm-hmm. Jr.'s musical taste in The Sopranos? All the Slipknot posters too in the bedroom. They were insane. <laughs> Thanks, uh, uh, Iletta. 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 So I forget in what order it happened, but. I know I was already a huge. You were uh, a Slipknot person. Slipknot, right? big yeah, time. I Love Slipknot. We, I, I, I told so Kasim to um, send a, a DM to the lead singer of uh, Slipknot, Slipknot to, to try and get him to come on here. So hopefully he he sees it. He has not yet, but, <laughs> but you know we're hoping we we have. Faith. Yeah, we got to add Corey Taylor somehow on Instagram or something. Anyway. Um, yeah, let me just double check. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, because they were so nice. To, like, these guys were the nicest fucking dudes ever. To Like, when I went to their first the show that I went to of them, I was 16, and it was at the Roxy. And security was such, I remember the guy. Like, he's such a dick. And he was like, he can't come in. And the drummer, this guy, Sean, was there. And he was outside. And he was like, well, he's my son. And if he can't come in, we're not playing. And the guy was like, all right clink like open the rope we went in i was like like and it was before i ever like went to like clubs or anything so it was like whoa like we just they said no and now we're inside like you know (laughs) i was like holy shit and they they took me backstage they were insane they were some of the i I would like to save the stories for if if Corey ever comes on yeah but they were so great i was a big fan of them i love mudvayne dig one of the best workout songs of all time you got a little fly in here babe um, the song "Dig" by Mudvayne. If you work out, but it might be too crazy for you. It's 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 pretty it's a pretty crazy song. Uh, but they 
so somebody who worked on this guy Louis worked on Sopranos. His girlfriend worked for Roadrunner Records. And I forget in what order it happened, but we all kind of became friends. And then the posters started showing up. But also, like, I would show up, like, on set skateboarding. And then David Chase would be like, oh, like, write me in a scene where, like, mm-hmm. I'm skateboarding or whatever. So, yeah, I just started wearing, like, all Slipknot shirts. And, like, I remember, like, one time, like, Hatebreed and, like, just all these, like, P- Pantera was my favorite. Like, I love Pantera. They threw Pantera in there. So, um yeah, who was in charge of the music? I'm Harry not really David, sure. Right? He's a big music guy. He, yeah, he definitely was in charge of like the music on the show. <clears throat> but as far as like putting the posters in my room of like what band and stuff, I don't know. Well, I remember <clears throat> Juliet, our wardrobe lady. Like she had a friend in a band called like a local band out of Jersey called the Churchills. So like I wore their T-shirt and had their band. But then when I became really close friends with Lance Bass, I asked if we could put the In Sync poster in my dorm, and they did. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's dope. Lance Bass, I've heard him on a couple podcasts here. He's so well spoken, so oh, smart. Such a he is so one of the smart. top gays. He is so smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so there's there's that. Thanks for the email. Here's one from Anthony. He says, "Let's talk about sex." Okay. Hi guys, love the podcast. Just binged all 35 episodes in less than two weeks. Keep Ooh. them coming. Wow. I you like guys put guy. a lot of your personal business out there, so I figured why not put it all out there myself. This topic is more for Jamie. My, my wife and I have been together for 11 years, and we've been married a little over five. Ever since she gave birth to our first kid, she's pretty much lost all interest in having sex, mm-hmm. except for when we were planning our second kid. Mm-hmm. And I get it. After working all day and dealing with two kids all night, she's tired, and so am I. We both have demanding jobs, but I also cook, clean, do the dishes, laundry, help out a ton with the kids, etc. I do more than any other guy I know, and no matter how tired I am, I could be ready to have sex in an instant. I feel that for <laughs> all I do around here. The, it's not Castle. I can it's tell you. It's not that. me. The <laughs> least she could do is try and get in the mood for me every once in a while. It's the one thing I need from her that I can't get anywhere else unless I cheat, which I would never do. I've researched it a unless bit. Unless Jamie it, wants to. It's I've like researched, love butter pikestra. <laughs> I, I've researched a bit and it does butter pikestra. <laughs> Might be the name of the episode. You wouldn't have to go far to have a kick-ass porn name. I got a scene with Butter Pike Street. Speaking later. of Cutter, uh, if you go to com- promo code P. I've researched it a bit. And it does seem like it's common after childbirth, mm-hmm. so I'm wondering if this is something you've experienced. If so, was there anything you did to brought to? I think he's trying to say to bring the desire mm-hmm. back, yeah. or no? That did that brought the desire back. Yeah. We're in our 30s, and there's no way. I can go another 20, 30 years only having sex once a month, if that any okay. advice. Rob, P.S., Rob, do yourself a favor. Stay single. Kasim, you don't even like sex, so whatever. <laughs> and then the pregnant black woman emoji four times. This guy, Wait, this guy read listens. The, I like read the I like P.S. Him. again? I, this I, guy listens. I like, I like, I like Yeah, yeah he's deep. Again, it's putter, Butter Pikestra. <laughs> Butter Pikestra. Okay. That's a great Do you email. want me to answer or do you have any more? Okay. No, it's for you. Can you, just read, the, can you just read the bottom again? I laughed. Yeah, it says, thanks in advance, Anthony. P.S. Rob, do yourself a favor. Stay single. Kasim, you don't even like sex, so whatever. <laughs> Black pre- pregnant woman emoji four times. Oh, I, okay. I like this. This is one of my favorite emails um, of all time. So, yes, it's totally a thing. Like, I've been in mommy groups where a lot of women have felt, like, really bad about it and guilty about it, but... It's it's actually like a hormonal thing. You know, we we blame things on hormone like PMS, but it's an actual legit thing where they can really control your impulses, your urges, like being turned off by things. Also, after having a baby, if you think about it, like I know for me, especially after the first year of my first son, like I was touched out. Like he was eating from my boob, hands on me all the time. By the end of a day, like I didn't want anyone fucking touching my Mm. body. So that that also played a part for me. You hear that what, putter? What helped was, first of all, I love how involved you are, but don't call it help. I get really upset when Cutter says he helps out with the kids because I'm like, they're your kids mm, too. Good point. Like, I don't don't tell me you helped me today with our children. Like, do I show up and be like, I helped a lot with the two boys today. Like, I helped you work. I took care of our boys. Like, mm-hmm. we don't do that. To get the, I, I, maybe you don't say that to her, but if you do, I would just take that off the table. 
What really helped me was Cutter giving me blocks of time just for myself, whether it was like 30 minutes that I can take a shower and shave and put lotion and not feel rushed, blow out my hair, or to just lay in my bed and watch like Bravo for an hour and like know that no one was going to come. Like, and we call, I call it like goddess time. Like give me <laughs> my time to like reconnect with myself, even masturbate, like whatever it is. But like you, okay. like you have to give your woman time to decompress no one's gonna go from thing to thing to thing to thing and want sex yes. like a woman can't a man can for sure like my husband is the same way he literally is like i will have sex with you at any moment of the day just tell me and I, it was hard and when we were trying for our second like, he hold that thought it. i'm gonna go masturbate <laughs> yeah, exactly but Butter. i mean and even like i don't know porn like videos there's things that can help but like you need to give her the time to figure out what it is to get her back yeah. in touch with herself is my advice. I mean, to me, it sounds like this dude's living a dream. <laughs> <laughs> he has a kids. girl who never I wants to have kids. sex with you. <laughs> yeah, everything seems to be going well. Where's the problem? Once a month I, I is wonder, all you gotta do. I wonder if the dude. Hormones... I did it twice in one day the other day. So. Hey now. Whoa. So I wonder if I wasn't lady? in a bed. We did three times last Whoa. week, and I thought that was really wow pretty good. I'm kind of like a, a a sex dynamo. One time wasn't in the bed. Where was it? Uh, it was in the bathroom. Oh. On the counter. A little blumpkin? Oh. On top of an ant trail. There was ants. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. And she's like, oh, it's like you have a million hands. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dynamo. Oh, uh, yeah. I love when I get cats like right, right in that, that sweet spot. Good. <laughs> that was good. Uh, holy shit. Okay. Uh, but, oh, so here's the thing. Do you think What's... that it, it could be hormones where it's like raising this kid is so fucking hard. If this guy fucks me, I might have another one. And no. your brain is like, I, we do not want to have another one of these right now when this one is still like meh, like not. No, it's not that. It's not. It is. It, he, he didn't like when we were trying. To, we because we didn't try to get pregnant our first time. When we tried to get pregnant the second time, not. I don't have to knock on what it already happened, but thankfully it <laughs> happened very quickly. But like in those few times, he hated it because he's like, "You're only having sex with me right now." He's like, "Oh, I have to come to inside of you." No, <laughs> but like he's like, it's like a job. Like it's like a. Oh, we need to have sex right now because you're trying to get pregnant. Like he, he's very sensitive that way. He, he want, he's a cancer. You know, he wants it like. Uh, Jeez, I've I've heard a lot of derogatory terms, but calling somebody cancer is <laughs> it's not nice. He's a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> You're Rob, really, man. You're really hey, welcome to the Rob today. Show, everybody. Hey, listen, I've been inside for fucking three months, guys. I got them all got fucking all material. Bang, bang, Watch, bang. Watch after the show, he's gonna be like, "That was our best show ever." <laughs> <laughs> you were fine, but man, yeah. I was on fire. <laughs> How many push-ups did you have? Doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> I'm doing one-arm push-ups when you come outside. <laughs> Thing with the hands and the hands. <laughs> all right, here's another one. It's from Joel. Hey, Joel. He says, hi, guys. I heard about the podcast when I was listening to Talking Sopranos. Shout out to Michael Imperioli and Steve Sharippa yep. and the Talking Sopranos crew. And I thought I would check you guys out, and I'm glad I did. You all seem to have, uh, you all seem to get along well and have really funny stories. I really relate to you all in some way, like Rob's heavy drug use in his 20s. I'm 37 now. Cassim and his friends who joke around and can just hang with without any pretentiousness. Or Jamie and her kids. I have a five-year-old and a seven-month-year-old girl. And when my boy was three, he had hand and foot disease, oh. hand, foot, mouth. Yes. Twice. He's, that, you he's can't had get that through email, right? Yeah, I don't think so. All right. uh, my question is, is Cutter Jamie's husband's real name? It is. Wow. I watch is... a lot of the first 48 because it is so gritty and the most real TV out there. From this, I understand most people, both men and women in America, have a nick or street name that they are known by such as AK-47, Light, Mercedes, <laughs> and Pulse. But they also have a normal normal name too. In Australia, where I'm from, someone might have a nickname, but it's more of a joke name. Like if someone has red hair, you'd call them Bluey. Or if somebody's really skinny <coughs> and tall, you might call them Nugget, like Chicken Nugget, Cute. which are round in shape. Keep <laughs> up the great work, Joel from Melbourne, Australia. Very funny. It's his real name. When his yep. mom was pregnant with him, she was watching like a Lifetime movie and there was a character named Cutter. 
and her, her and his dad loved it. It is also the name of a pitch. So I, I thought it was a pitch, most yeah. Most people assume that that's what he was named ah. after because um, See, his I father was, was a baseball like... player, but no, or it's cutting lines, right? Uh, but no, it's it's just a name that they liked. Yeah. It's his real name. It's a cool name, man. It's a cool... It's everywhere a, we go, he's... he's when like, everyone's cut, like, what? we should name our kids him? something that really cuts through, you know? know? And they just went, yeah, how about Cutter? Boom. Perfect. Speaking of Lifetime movies, I watched some of yours. Some of your... Oh, you did? Isn't it Lifetime? The Lady in the Window? Was yeah, it? The Neighbor in the Window. Neighbor in the Window, he yeah. watched yeah, it yeah, while you've been really bored. He watches it like he poops, absolutely naked <laughs> and hunched over. <laughs> Ashamed of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I'll tell you, I don't get embarrassed about a lot of stuff. I'm embarrassed about something I've been doing during quarantine. Tell me. I got hooked watching these like 25 year old girls vlogs on YouTube about like what they eat in a day. <laughs> what? Wait, are, aren't like, they always Australian or from some other country? <laughs> See, this guy knows. What I know what you're talking yeah, yeah. about, dude. First of all, first thing's always what the same. What they eat in a day? First thing's always the same. It's either a smoothie or we got uh, oats, right? And then <sighs> afternoon comes the avocado toast. <laughs> all of them are the fucking same. I'm waiting for somebody to give me something new. But like, there's something about having this hot chick like vibe without actually having to deal with like. As soon as I get annoyed, like this is the laptop, I'm just like, yeah, all right, like you know, like I don't have to. There's no no bad feeling about being like, okay, I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> you know, thank you enough of your fucking uh, Melba toast or wh whatever they whatever they Next, eat. Next, Rob's gonna be watching makeup tutorials. Hey, listen, if that's what it comes to. But they're, yeah, it's always avocado toast. They all make the best but avocado But they all toast. start their videos with, like, their intro, which is, like, montages of them in different parts of, like, the world or city, you know? And it's, like, they have this cool little graphic that goes, like, Janice Eats, you know? And it's, like, <laughs> shoo! And it's, like, hello, everybody. Welcome to my new episode today. We're going to be going down to Venice Beach and trying some of those street tacos or whatever, you know? And, like, <laughs> yeah. they go on... They do all this fucking shit, and then they're, all, they're also like dressed like uh, the, the full makeup, and you know they're also wearing super cute outfits. But they'll do outfit changes. Yeah, that's what I like. This, so breakfast. Like now we're going for a donut, and then she'll change for but the see, donut. But here's the here's the thing that I love. <laughs> Kasim is talking about pre-quarantine videos. Yes. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about these girls. So they're like, oh, I just woke up, right? And they have like a messy like ponytail thing going on with like really loose clothes. And they're like, oh, I think we're going to start with my herbal tea and I'm going to do this thing. And then they cut to them. Uh, a few like a few minutes later or whatever in a totally different outfit like makeup is kind of done <laughs> yeah. and they're like all right now i'm going to have uh, uh, a smoothie or whatever then whole nother outfit it's time for lunch like we're uh, my toast is kind and this is the new bread that i like and like yeah. some people keep it in the fridge i keep it in the freezer i'm a little crazy like they take 3 bites out of the avocado toast and go mmm soy full and then <laughs> And then the camera shuts off, and they probably eat a fucking pizza. Yeah, and, and by the way, I, I'm I don't never, buy it. I'm never. Wa the weird thing is, I'm never watching it going. Oh, this is so good. Like it's what? just, it's just like it's a little bit light, it's a little bit healthy. <laughs> so will fun. you send me some clips of this? I, I will. I need to yeah. Understand what there's you're a girl. About. There's a girl named Blair Walnuts. Who's, <laughs> <laughs> who's <laughs> is she? A cousin of Butterpike Street? Polly. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Polly Walnuts. She <laughs> Butterpike Street. She's uh, she's yeah, you know, best. Blair and, Walnuts. Is, <laughs> yeah, sounds like a Sopranos character. That's what I'm saying. And she's funny. Like she says, she. Oh, I, I can't. I can't give her too wow. much praise. I'll sound no, like a fucking plug her, dude. Blair Walnuts. There's somebody who's uh, gonna be watch this and be like, hey, how these many guys. I mean, are these like big? How did you stumble? Oh, upon some of them this? have million. YouTube is just like, dude, hey, like people uh, can make a living with like it's, six thousand subscribers. If you, if you subscribers. like pajama pants, you'd yeah, like right. You'd like uh, Blair Walnuts. Blair Walnuts. Here's here's Janice Eats. Here's the problem when. I so obviously to support, I subscribe to like Talking Sopranos channel sure. and like whatever. So now I'm getting all these recommendations of like Sopranos shit, and I'm like, I, I'm not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not that into it. I don't want it. Like there was one day I opened up. You'll my never laptop. guess which two Soprano stars have never watched the show. Uh, yeah, click for more. Uh, like, is this about me? Clickbait. But it's like it's like there's there there'll be like eight boxes, and sometimes like seven of them are like. 
Poldy Walnut's greatest hits or like funniest lines or like t- 10 killings on The Sopranos or this. And I'm like, and I go through and actually click. I learned there's a thing like not yeah, interested. Yeah, not interested, right. Because I don't want them to keep mm. showing me mm. the the thing mm. or whatever. But I can't, and now it's, but it made me think about like, wow, there's people the same way when I open mine up, it's like podcasts and Joe Rogan and Tiger Belly, your mom's yeah. house. Like some people are, it's like Sopranos, Sopranos, Sopranos. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Yeah. That's what it's like for me now. Oh, when I when I mm. go to YouTube or even on Instagram, all like my pop the homepage is just like a bunch of old Sopranos. Really? Yeah, it's like photos of you, photos of you. Oh, that photo of you two on the NJ.com article that that came out. We're both round. It was so adorable. Did oh, you see that. Us? Uh, I saw that, but the picture. I would of abduct you, both wait, of you and bring you to an island. I posted that that you sent me the picture of me crying. The at picture the of you crying is like Did the best. Did you see what I posted? On oh, Instagram? I saw that too. Yeah, one of the best pictures I've ever. I might get black and white that and put it up in my apartment. Oh, I love that picture. It's real. Yeah, because you're might, like I might crying, black and white but put you're in my smiling. Room, and my right favorite next to the Jergens <sighs> and the Kleenex. My favorite part is right behind. Uh, your head is the soprano sign, but your head is blocking it. So only we know. Like, if I had that up in my like, love Jason Sorbonne. When you go to Jason Sorbonne's house in the in the basement, there's like a shrine to Sopranos, and oh, I've really? never been. Well, it's his parents' house. We yeah, love you, yeah, Jason. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make you look bad because he's no, my embarrassed. My mom's garage is like right. Yeah, I have... my Latina cover and like. <laughs> yeah, my my mom has stuff up too, but my dad does. I think uh, you know my uncle loves Good it, breath. but. I never had anything up in my apartment of like Sopranos or. Meaning, I have one. I have this black and white picture we took for TV Guy that they gave us like a print of it. And it's like all of us kind of shadowed. That's the only thing I have in my house of it. But it's like, it's like, it looks like art. Like it's like a really like awesome photo that you could have of anyone, but it's. It's us. Is it like the Hitchcock profile thing? No, we're all like, I'm on a chair, oh. Rob's over there. Oh, that's like, cool. we're all kind of placed differently, but like, we're all kind of like, ha- yeah. I'll take a picture of it and send it to Please. you. Or you have, can come over. You'd, you'd be a great Hitchcock figure, babe. Oh, man. I'd be, I'd be the bird's cover. Yeah. With this beak. Look like the letter P. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. We got to end this. We got to end this before you start stand up comedy. Can <laughs> we do one more email? Yeah, but the thing I was saying, oh. I love the picture because the soprano sign your head is blocking it but you see like the s and like yeah. just that you know like oh it's like red Here, and I'll like show you guys on it's a home, really yeah, yeah chasm i i got i gotta say you could tell i'm very emotional these days look at this fucking picture yeah i think i like that oh, on instagram so good. so good oh bryce is crying oh bryce all right what you have a email how about this ipod recording me oh wow Oh, really, geez, really huh? dating us back. But oh, by the way, before we go nice on, whoever's made nominated. it this far into the podcast, thank you guys so much for sticking with us through the fucking Zoom podcast. Yeah, Rob. Rob hated yeah, every second of not being in the studio. And look, I, I don't. It. I don't think you're wrong. The timing is off on Zoom. It's tough to like jump in. Um, it was f- super convenient. I'll give you that. But it is something nice when we're all in the yeah, same room together. Sure. Yeah. So the people who stuck with us, because I know, like, I love podcasts, and there are even some podcasts that I love where they were doing Zoom, and I'm like, I just can't. Yeah, but we it's were also respecting what was happening. Absolutely. And now we're like, fuck you. Yeah. Is is Cutter still crazy about germs and people and this, or is he just like whatever? Well, he hasn't been out of the house. But when you have people over, is he like, oh, we got to wash that? Or like, no, no, because the only people we've had over are people we've like, we have the same few people we keep seeing. Right. Um, but when we go out, I mean, he keeps, he's like throwing, hand, like pouring hand sanitizer over yeah. all of us. All I feel time. like we got to have a day where we go hit that pool. Or you, you said you might want to come to Venice. Come <sighs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah, let's do over. both. Let's do wanna both. Want to come this afternoon? Pick up Lindsay or don't and come over. We're still moving. Oh, you're moving right now. Yeah, up to this guy. But I can drop. I mean, I can. No, come I on. can ride home alone. It's fine. <laughs> I, don't, I could be road ragey all I, would I just, want. I would just go in Jamie's car. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I, I, I could I road could... rage all I want without oh, fear oh, of being oh, yeah. shamed. Sorry, I thought you were. Yeah. Um, one more lost, email. Yeah, one more. He lost his career <laughs> on the way here. <laughs> I mean, I was in fear. Embarrassing. For. Where's your bomb? This one's from Sergio. Subject: Thanks. Hey, guys, not sure if anyone will actually read this. Joke's on you, Sergio. (laughs) But I want to thank you for... I don't know if anyone will listen to this. I want to thank you for creating this podcast. I'm only five episodes in, but I'm already a huge fan. That's what I like, you know? (laughs) 
<laughs> Huge fan, five episodes in. Yeah. The three of you have great chemistry, and I'm amazed at how real, authentic, and entertaining you guys are in each episode. That's exactly what made The Sopranos the greatest show ever. Uh, it's, it's making Shelter in Place much easier to bear. Anyway, I don't have a question. I just want to keep saying keep up the good work. I also want to thank Jamie for posting her support for George Floyd on Instagram, despite the negative comments she knew she would get from douchebags who value property more than human life, Sergio. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yes. feel like we maybe should recognize what's been going on. I wanted to. Re- I, I read that for a reason. Great. Um, you didn't know that was there. I did. No, he didn't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find an organic way to bring up important. Well, even if you didn't know, here we have it, which is nice. Well, okay, so we're. You know, we've. Uh, as you know, um, because of the the murder of George Floyd, there have been protests and. Um, the only thing I'll really speak to is like how it's kind of affected me. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you, you can talk about how you feel about it. And this Black Lives Matter movement this time around, for some reason, just clicked with me. Yeah. Much more, much more people, yeah. than before. And the message is still the same that it has been. I just realized I was more of a before I was just a passive observer of what was happening mm-hmm. and didn't really understand how important it was for everyone to to kind of talk about it. And before the the kind of uh, I don't know if it was in twenty fifteen or or when the um the black the last Black Lives Matter movement happened, when anyone would say, Yeah, but all lives matter, I was like, Well, okay. But like, it's not like this time where I'm taking major offense to somebody Correct. saying all lives matter because it is. And if you don't agree, that's that's fine. This is just us talking about. It. I'm just letting you know what my point of view is. But and everyone has made this point. When you say all lives matter, you are deflecting um, from the point. The point is, and somebody made an analogy as like a mother. If you have kids and one of your kids falls down and breaks their arm, you don't gather all your kids up and say. I hope all your arms get better. You go and tend to the kid whose arm is broken and you take that kid to the doctor and you get the kid the love and care and like the the, uh, hospital visit that he needs. Not all the kids need that at that moment. Yes, you love all your kids. Or you go to an event to raise money for cancer research and someone stands up and is like, all diseases matter. Of course all diseases matter. But right now this is our focus. And I think what it is 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 like you said, it, I think it's affecting enough people now to realize that it is our job as well to support this. It's not on the black yeah. community to educate us and bring these stories to the surface that we've been trying to ignore because we didn't want to believe that they were happening. I think it's, right. it's, it's in a movement in acknowledgement, in learning, in standing by, in believing. Yeah. Um, and I think that the only thing that I want to be like, don't want to have come along with this is is um, is um, judgment on how or anger at people and how they're trying to learn. I just think like I, I just I just wish there was less judgment on those in social media that are are trying to figure out how to support. I yes. think that you know, for me, if I put, if I put a post and people are telling me I'm doing it wrong and this and that, like. I'm thank you for telling me, but please don't yell at me. I'm you clearly understand what my intentions are here. Right. And and I I am humbled and I apologize for not being more active in the um, understanding of the injustices that have been happening to the black community for so many years. But um, I, I do. I am inspired and I think it's wonderful. And I think that. You know, I mean, if you're looking at just the time, as soon as we thought we were going to be like stepping out into this world, this other tragedy and heartbreak happened. And I think that there's just a lot of, like we can't go back to normal. And I think that that's what's kind of the thing here is like there's n- still needs a lot more work to be done. And this isn't a so partisan much. issue. Nick, uh, Nick Cannon had a good line. He's like, when people say save the whales, they're not saying fuck the dolphins. Of, exactly. You know, exactly. But fuck dolphins because they do rape human beings. They um, look, I, I, uh, it's a great point, and it is. Before the the kind of the first go around we had of this, it was kind of like, well, I guess I support it, but I don't really n- feel like I can go out and do something about mm-hmm. it, or I don't know what to do. The position I I'm taking now is, um, I'll listen. 
I'll go to, I went to a, a, a protest. I went to a couple protests. I uh, watch, I've watched that documentary, The 13th on Netflix, which is like incredibly insightful. Mm -hmm. I'm just like educating and then using my Instagram as a way to like help bring some of these issues out without having to be super pushy about yeah. it or um, it's not just a problem for you know one group of people the only way we get around this is if we all kind of rally around this group of people yeah. and uh, it's great that this movement is picking up so much momentum and it's also unfortunate that there's been looting but the looting is not is not the issue no. looting is a byproduct of what's the 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 deck has been stacked against african americans ever since they were brought to this country if you're focusing on the looting instead of focusing on black lives ending on the streets at the hands of the people that are protecting us you've completely lost the point and every time you hashtag me even somebody before i got here hashtag me blue lives matter you are deflecting and you're minimalizing and you're marginalizing a whole group of people because you see what you consider to be an unlawful act. Well said. So well said. And I will say as a parent, um, because you know, Bo asked me what's going on when he saw, you know, the protests and seen pictures and on the news. And I, you know, explained to him, I said, these are people that are all coming together because they believe that nobody should be judged of the color of their skin. They th you know, I'm trying to figure out the best ways to explain things. And there's been a lot of great resources out there. But I will say, as we've had these conversations, I have just, I think so much of what's happening now is just setting up this next generation to be so fucking awesome. Totally agree. I really, I have such hope and like faith in that. And I just like, I look at my son and I'm like, you and your friends and and this generation are gonna be fucking great. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I feel like there's a there's like a weird thing that like it's it's this is kind of separate from but not like I feel like people struggle with like when you're getting like you see the next generation and and people feel like oh they might be like they're gonna be too soft or they're gonna be like too nice or they're gonna be and it's like. You want to be like, oh, no, that's what you should be. But then you do realize like when people are too nice and too soft and that's when people take advantage of them. So like trying to find this fucking middle ground of like, you know what I mean? Like if if this is not about the, the George it's Floyd thing, fair. this is about something separate. Yeah, but yeah. it's like I would like it would be so great if everyone could just like. Oh, like you know like the hippies like that's how shit should i feel like totally. i'm like oh my god it'd be so great if people were just everyone was love and, th and then it's like but how long would we be able to sit in this country and everyone just love each other before fucking pe like these other countries see that as fucking weakness and i feel like i notice a similarity with that in in life it's the same way with like the country it's like we just want to have you know uh, like why would you not want just a president who felt you know for everyone and was so nice it's, it's like because you're scared of being taken advantage of mm -hmm. because that's when that's when it you know it's like that's what i feel when people like are afraid to let their guard down it's usually because they've been hurt before you know what i mean they they know they're afraid of what's going to happen if <clears throat> you know when, when i moved out to la the first time for like nine months my dad came out he's like you got fucking soft and like right away i was like Phew. No, I didn't. Like, yeah. you know, like, I wanted to, you you want to be like, no, I'm from New York. Like, I'm not fucking so, but it's like, because you're scared of, and again, this is not about. Well, that's toxic masculinity, right? So that's, so I'll probably get called uh, soft for saying that, but that sort of, you're not a man or you're soft because you're not like tough is exactly the problem with toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. It's afraid of being vulnerable or open or like, God forbid you show care for somebody else or another man or, or you know, without fear of looking soft. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. But but that's that's like a smaller thing to what I'm saying, which is like, imagine tomorrow everybody in this country was like, you know what? We're just all going to love each other and be totally fair and put our guns down. No gun. None of this. Like everything that these peaceful, like, like a monk w would want or yeah. whoever. It's like, how long would we last before we were getting fucking just we would be fucking taken over we'd be it's like 
it's such a fucked up thing of like I you see people who want to be I just see people in life who want to be a certain way and they're not that way because of what happens in life when they are if yeah, that makes but any I sense can, as somebody who used to have a massive guard up and over the last you know eight or nine years has like really broken that down I feel like I'm sure I'm taking advantage of a whole lot more, but it's more important to me that I feel good about the person that I am and the choices yeah. I make and the things that I say. And like when I go to bed at night, that's the shit that would haunt me more than what somebody else did. Yeah. And I think if you think about a collective and and, and what that what that could what you, you will could be taken advantage of no matter as what. a good person and no matter what. So it's what kind of person do you want to be to your f husband, to your kids, and to your friends and family? And but I think, I think it's different Because what is when... life? Life's a fucking right. game, right? We're here to like survive, have as much fun, and enjoy, and raise children or not, or like whatever. Yeah, the onus is, is, is not on you to um, worry about the couple people out of 50 or 100 that will take advantage of mm -hmm. you and put a wall up, and, and then in turn that wall is up for everyone around you. Yeah. It's it's the person who's taking advantage of you is is the person that is going to be judged or whatever or, or have trouble sleeping at night. I mean, I think I think the point of all this is it's your your point is we can total I can totally see yeah how long before our country's invaded but if I'm we're all saying, to do that I right. See, but that's, I see the people who are like uh, marching in in the protest, and then I see people who like. Or like fuck that, f and then I see the people in the middle who like they want to change, you know? They they want to right. be, and those uh, are the people they're... we're trying to bring exactly. over. That's what the that's, but, but, that's the but tipping here's, point. But here's the thing, right? It's like I why those people I think can't just give in is like le like we are very lucky, right? It's like we live in fucking nice neighborhoods. We li so it's like you get to choose who you want in your life. White privilege. Who you don't. You get to choose who you want in your life. Who you? But, but by the way, he's not white. Kasim, I'm just saying. Uh, I, as I'm talking about the totally, three of us. I'm totally, not, by the totally. way, you're not white either, are you? No. I'm fucking. But white. A, as a Middle Eastern person, I have my own things that I deal with, especially after 9/11. Right. Mm -hmm. But I have had the benefit of growing up in white suburbs, and to that point, I've benefited from white privilege. Mm -hmm. I've never had to like go outside of my house. And worry about like whether or not I was gonna get pulled over because my tail light was out, and like whether or not I was gonna survive that interaction. Mm. Yeah, there's people that leave their house every day, whether they're George Floyd, Trayvon Martin. They go to the grocery store, or liquor store. They, um, I mean, I've stolen stuff from a, a grocery store. I had never once thought, oh, I might be gunned down by for doing this because I stole a bag of Skittles. Right. You know what I mean? There's there there's a problem when there's a group of people who have a much higher uh chance of being gunned down because of their skin color. And not only that is that their entire community and neighborhood has been systematically oppressed whether it be because of redlining or be because uh they they can't get loans. There's I mean they can't get into certain colleges. There's there's a whole that's part of what's so daunting about this is that this has been ingrained for hundreds of years yeah. and it's like we're just scratching at the surface. We're just at the point where we're like, hey, there's this thing going on. And then people are being like, oh, oh, I guess so. And then that's kind of where we're at right now. And then there's the glacier underneath, right? We're just at the top of the glacier. Mm -hmm. And then underneath it's like, oh, yeah, dude, these guys like – banks won't loan to these communities if you live in these neighborhoods you can't get into these colleges they're being in mass incarcerated at record numbers their fathers aren't around there's no intact families there's like i, I mean there's just so many issues that are not because of them it's because of them being brought over and developing um agricultural and 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 growing the textile industry of the United States, the country was built on the backs of slave labor. Mm -hmm. And we, when we made them build our country, we didn't give them anything for it. And eventually we said, yeah, well, now you're free, and but you can't own land. And then, oh, now you can own land, and then we'll fucking bomb it, like in Tulsa in 1921, or we'll take, we'll fucking destroy Black Wall Street. 
we'll t- we'll anything that you make we will take eventually and then the 60s roll around and then you have Martin Luther King who's like the guy who's very much like we need to do this peacefully and then you have Malcolm X who's like that's not going to work we need to fucking hammer it with a nail and then we finally get a little bit of a movement a lot of bit of a movement there but 50 60 years later we still have even though we we consider ourselves woke now there's still so much systematic systemic there's a difference between the two systemic things that are going to be so hard to turn up we're just starting to now and the fact that we're all now kind of getting it more so than we did last time is like it's great it's a lot of progress but so much has to be done and it's not going to go away anytime soon and the only thing i worry about is like is this like one of these trending topic things where it's like Mm -hmm. we'll forget about it look look at coronavirus it's yeah. still going on. We have completely fucking almost forgot about it. Completely. And it's still 20 states just had record spikes. setting spikes. Fuck. Yeah, like if, if a UFO lands tomorrow, this is taking a back seat. This is what I'm saying, people. We need a UFO to land on the goddamn White House lawn and we will forget about everything that's happened. I think it's also an idea of, you know, and this is where you can use your voice is to vote. Um, oh God, yes. And uh, you know, putting people in places of power that could help educate us and mail in your ballots yeah. in places like Georgia and Alabama, where you have to wait in line for four, five, six hours to fucking cast a vote, is ridiculous. Yep. Mail in your fucking in ballots. This day and age, the way how quickly we do things, that's bullshit. It's set up against people of color in states like that to mm-hmm. vote. Mail in your ballots. Mm-hmm. Woo. And has some twenty percent off yeah. and free and shipping at manscaped.com yeah. with promo code. Get your pube cutter, PJ yeah. Pants. Get manscaped. clean and ready. Um, look, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm glad we were able to I'm talk about so that. Too. I'm it's glad too. it's super important. I hope we can touch on it a little bit um, more. I like listening to you talk about it. It's to be super yeah. fluid, and and you know what, dude? I I know next to nothing about all this. I, this is just me regurgitating a lot of what you're, I've read and watched the last two weeks. If you're um, even interested, the 13th, it's on Netflix right now. It's about mass incarceration and how the history of the prison system um, was stacked against African Americans and, mm-hmm. and Hispanics. Um, if you want to see something that's completely running in parallel with what's happening right now, LA 92, about the 92 riots, Rodney King and the riots that happened in 92. There is so much that happens that happened then that is happening right now. And God forbid, if this verdict comes back not guilty, which I don't think it will, I but if it does, so. you will see what happens. You will see what happens when black communities have to take things into their own hands and when they feel so uh, oppressed against that they start act, start uh, taking to the streets and you will see fires. You will see Koreans on the roofs protecting their business. I mean, there's a whole fucking thing that happened that will happen again. And it's where we're... we're in the first half of that documentary Those right now. Those push-ups got my boy fucking pumped I up. I am jacked yeah. up. This guy's fucking ready to go. We came back with go. our A game. Yeah, this LA 92 is. in the 13th and... Um, I saved someone's marriage and sex life. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I am not your Negro. Um, the Central Park Five. There, mm-hmm. th- These are all... When they see us. Ava DuVernay's... Uh, I don't know if I said her last name right. She has a lot of um, films that she's directed that... Touch. When they see us is so when they see yeah. us, yeah, yes. so oh. good. That's the Central Park yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. And by the way, if what I said made no sense, I only went to fucking up to eighth grade. I'm a dummy. No. I'm just here Every, to that's fucking. That's the thing is, everyone. Boop, 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 that's what. That's and, what I mean. I don't want judgment. And what people, what this is igniting and making people feel and contemplate and think about. Like it's all nothing is wrong. No. This is the point of this: is to make people start thinking. If you have questions, you're on the right track yes, if you yes. are confused you are on the right track if you are still spouting off all lives matter blue lives matter uh blacks kill more blacks if you're spouting off that nonsense you are on the wrong track it doesn't matter if uh your blue lives matter hashtags and your all lives matter hashtags are only deflecting minimalizing and marginalizing mm-hmm. a whole movement okay 
I gotta Thank go. Thank you. We I love gotta you. make a pee pee. Hey, thanks for watching. YouTube.com. <laughs> make great. sure you hit the go. subscribe button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be updated. And thanks again to Manscaped.com for sponsoring today's episode. It's so good to be back in the studio. Yeah. Thank you guys for sticking with us through. Uh, Took a stick with us. For thanks for sticking with us. I know those those Zoom episodes. Also, man. I haven't sang live in 18 years, but I am singing on Wednesday the 17th. If you go 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4.30 East, uh, no, 4.30 Pacific Standard Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. If you go to broadwayondemand.com and go to Acoustic Cafe, I'm singing five songs. Whoa. I'm singing a little set. I'm absolutely terrified. Online? Yeah, or I'm at singing a place? live. From the Bourbon Room in Hollywood. Oh, sick. Can you tell um, us what one of the songs is? Or? I'm singing um, uh, Someone to Watch Over Me, I Don't Know How to Love Him, a bunch of like all Great. different kinds of cool Broadway songs, Rocky songs. Um, I'm terrified, be kind, but like, I don't know. It's I'm Let's excited that I can do it. Let's show up for Jamie. We'll put it up on you. the Instagram too. Yes, the day it happens. By the way, you guys can come and socially distance watch if you want. I'm there. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. Go all right, guys. You heard her. Love ya. Thank you guys for seeing us. See you later.